Welcome everyone, I'm Lauren Hawkins. Thanks for tuning in with us to Spirituality Adventures. We are so glad you're here and we're very excited about the content we get to share with you through our blogs and podcasts. Spirituality Adventures is made possible by your support. One way you can support us is by liking, following, subscribing, or sharing any of these podcasts or blogs that you like. Another way you can support us is by going to our website, www.spiritualityadventures.com. There you can click the support tab and you can sign up for a monthly subscription or a one-time gift. We appreciate all your support. Now here's Fred. Uh, that definitely happens. I'm going to sound speed. Uh, should be tracking now. And it is. Welcome everybody to Spirituality Adventures. This is a non-judgmental place to explore spirituality. And we are excited to have Ben Went with us today. Ben and I have only had a brief conversation. Uh, my my videographer, Matt Cox, introduced us, and I have now uh, listened to your music, not all of it, but uh, definitely your newest project. I've listened Sweet. to some of your podcasts, and I've read up on... Whoa on your history i've been stalking you for a week right now i love it so I love anyway it. i got ben went in my deep. head <laughs> awesome well thank you so much for having me i'm very excited to talk yeah so i want to first just get a little of your story out there so our audience can kind of get a feel for who you are um sure like you're a kansas city guy uh growing up in kansas city give us Born a little bit raised, of your background yep. your history kind of the Short sure. You give, yeah. Give you the elevator pitch of me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh, my name's Ben Went, born and raised Kansas City. Lived here pretty much my whole life. I, I lived in, uh, in Warrensburg in college, which is kind of a suitcase city for a lot of the kids to go to school there. So, I mean, on the weekends, I was always in bands and stuff. And so even though I lived there, I, I was, at, you know, back in KC pretty much every weekend. So pretty much my whole life lived in Kansas City. Um, I, I have a lot of passions. Music might be the most uh, dominant passion that I have. And, uh, I, I have been involved in the Kansas city music scene since I was about 13 or 14 years old, been in bands and stuff. And, uh, at, since I've been around the Kansas city scene for, you know, over half of my life, I'm getting old, uh, <laughs> I I'm very connected to it. I'm very passionate about it. And, um, I, a lot of my other sub passions all kind of stem from how much I love local music and, and, and trying to shine a light on, uh, what what bands are doing here in Kansas City? What me and my friends are doing, and and uh, I just think Kansas City, for the size it is, has uh, just just a disproportionate, just shocking amount of of talent. We've had multiple contestants on The Voice in the last couple of years. We got like Jake Wells and, and Paige Turner, and uh, you know I'm just I'm very proud of KC Music. That drives a lot of what I do. Then probably the most important thing is that I'm a dad. Um, I've got two wonderful daughters, Iris and Ruby. Iris is five. Ruby's uh, about 18 months. And then I'm a husband to uh, my best friend in the whole world, Sarah. And yeah, I mean, that's the that's the the view from a thousand feet of me, I think, probably. There's, right. there's other stuff, podcast host, uh, et cetera. But yeah. <laughs> we'll get to some of that here in a minute. Sure, there's sure. Some of your current projects. But um, tell me. A little bit. You you got into your first band at thirteen or fourteen. Is yeah, that that's right? probably about right. Yeah, I mean, um, I got a guitar for Christmas, sixth grade, and I spent the next year pretending like I could play it. My mom is a guitarist. She taught me the chords to play American Pie, and I kind of halfway played that, and then Smoke on the Water for about a year. <laughs> <laughs> and then I discovered Green Day and Green Day just kind of like made my head explode. And I heard the song Basket Case for the first time, which is funny because by the time I heard Basket Case, Basket Case must have been out for six years, seven years. But I heard it on the radio and was like, what is this? This is a language I haven't ever heard before. And I need to learn how to be fluent in this language. And I got a Green Day guitar book. And then so then that next year, about seventh grade, I, I started just obsessing over learning every single Green Day song, every single Blink-182 song, and just got really into just, you know, skateboard music, pop punk. And uh, from from that point on, I wanted to write my own songs. I wanted I was always into creative writing and, and short stories and poetry. Even I think I don't know, as long as I can remember, I liked to write poetry. Even as an elementary student, I liked writing poetry. 
And suddenly I had this ability to, to take my poetry and, and put it onto music. And, um, it, it just, uh, it just made my, like, it just exploded my brain. It just caused me to think about the whole universe differently. And, um, I know that this podcast is a lot about spirituality and like, I do think it unlocked in me like a, a connectivity to, to a, a higher existence than I had experienced before. And, and I, I, uh, yeah, I just never looked back. Uh, like again, just, yeah, it was green day and the who those were the two, two <laughs> bands that like when I first heard them, I was like, Holy crap, you can be so loud and you can be so intense. And then also sing about your feelings all at the same time, you know, and, and it just kind of changed my chemistry. That's amazing. So this is funny because I, I had a little, I, I kind of had a love for some of the punk yeah, pop stuff. Um, so like I had the, uh, the Dookie cassette. Oh man. Yes. <laughs> oh no. Do, I mean, Dookie, Dookie was, that was one of the records. I mean, I just, again, a basket case was the yeah. just like unlocked it, but yeah, I listened to Dookie front to back, front to back, front oh. to back. I had it on, I had it on a burnt CD. So I wasn't supposed to have anything that had a parental advisory on it, but this was in the golden age of internet piracy. And so I found the workaround that if I burned it myself, it didn't have the parental advisory, the explicit lyric warning on it. And so I, I have listened no, no. to that so, yeah, album. You're speaking my language. Yeah, I've listened to that album to so many times. I like, <laughs> I, I had blink 182 stuff. Um, yep. Yep. I remember, uh, like, um, I, there was a band called yellow card. Oh, are you, you're and yellow card. So uh, I've seen yellow card probably 12 times. So they, they, yes, yes, I would go to Lawrence. I remember one time I went to Lawrence and they played in a little bar bottleneck, maybe probably. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, it wasn't that big a place. Oh no. It's and, like a 300 cap room. Yeah. And, and yeah. uh, they were unbelievable. Like, yep. Like a punk yep. violin. You just can't beat yeah. that. You oh, know? no, no. So cool. And then the violinist does flips. Oh, he's the amazing. The violinist literally would like get on top of the guitar amp and do a backflip off of it. It was, yeah. it, oh, yellow it was card. amazing. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. So yellow card, I almost, oh, I say almost. This is the reason why 16 year olds should be able to get tattoos. You need to be at least 18 to get a tattoo. Cause I almost got the yellow card logo, like tattooed across my back shoulder. And when I was 16 and 17, I was like the day I turn 18, I'm doing it. And then I turned 18 and I was like, ah, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> what? There was a Christian band in Lawrence called Reliant K. Do you remember? Oh, Reliant that, K. Awesome. You remember yeah, yeah, them? Yeah. Reliant K. Yeah, no, they played through. I mean, so yeah. Reliant K. Um, I think they are op- still kicking on stuff there. I think they opened maybe for yellow car. I can't remember if that's right. I can not. totally picture them touring uh, together. I, I, I mean, can't remember, sense. but anyway, but no, yeah. Reliant K are, they're a great band. They're still kicking stuff out. Is like, it? I haven't a heard them in a yeah. long, long time. Interesting. I'll send you some, they put out a record. Gosh, now it's been seven or eight years, but it's called forget and not slow down. And it's, um, it's a really good record about loss and like, and moving on and uh i'll I'll send it to you it's really good beautiful piece of art yeah yeah so that was your stream um that you swam in mostly in terms of music genres was punk did you yeah i mean like i over the years i definitely grew to like other stuff um the first time I heard Outcast, they really kind of unlocked something. I didn't really like hip hop until I heard Outcast. Oh. And Outcast kind of had some sort of kind of they have like a little bit of a gospel sensibility. You know, they're from Atlanta. They like they have something in their southern roots mm-hmm. is just a little bit more um like there's there's a lot yeah. more like like bass guitar and, and occasionally yeah. organs and guitar and stuff, real drums, not just like a drum machine. And uh, Outcast definitely unlocked something, and yeah, I, I definitely was into. Um, what was the hip- name of their double album? I had their yes, double uh, album, Speaker Box. Speaker Love Box, Below. yeah, yeah, I yeah, had yeah. That. And it, that one's crazy because yeah, each member of the band they each wrote one half of the record, and it. Oh man, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, definitely some hip hop in there, but yeah, pop punk definitely dominated. And then my my parents listened to really good music, so uh, Paul Simon, Bruce Springsteen. The Who, Led Zeppelin, The Beatles, like all those I got from my parents. And, uh, it, you know, that's definitely in there big time, too. Right, yeah. right. So you you had some kind of connection to the church worship world. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I grew up, um, I grew up Disciples of Christ, um, very, 
very much like go to church every Sunday, um, pretty active in youth group. I would describe the church that I grew up in as pretty chill, pretty um, very positive message, like definitely not not a lot of talk of like hell or damnation or anything like that way more about like God loves you, be a good person, you know, that kind of stuff. What, what, what in the world does this Psalm mean? You know, how can you apply it to your life? Um, and I'm very thankful for that, that I had that foundation. Um, again, I mean like just so little talk of like sin and damnation and hell and way more just like how you can use the Bible to like, live a better, happier life. Um, And then somewhere in college, the church I grew up in kind of changed quite a bit. The senior pastor basically got kicked out basically because the older members of the church didn't like how hippy dippy it was and wanted it to be a little more fire and brimstone. And when he left, the music director left and the music director was my piano teacher and, and my vocal sheet, like, honestly, like one of my favorite people in the whole world taught me what, you know, how to actually make music. And um, once the two of them were out, I kind of lost it. And then, you know, it, it kind of was weird timing because that was college. And then college, I think a lot of people lose touch with church just because you're on your own for the first time. You're in charge of your own schedule for the first time. You're maybe going out pretty late on Saturday night. <laughs> um, and uh, so it was weird because then I kind of lost I, you know, lost touch of having feeling like I had any kind of like uh, physical space that was like a religious or spiritual home. And then right after college, um, got involved with uh, Good Shepherd uh, United Methodist, which is a church I, I feel very, very strongly about. I really like them. The head pastor, Mark Sheets, I think is, um, I think he's a genius. I think he's like truly a special person and a uh, a, a uniquely special vessel for just positivity in the world. And uh, they started a satellite campus and um, I was uh, chosen to be the worship leader of, of that satellite cam- campus. I had been very involved in the band, playing guitar, doing some vocals. Uh, a couple of times I filled in as the worship leader at the main campus. And so I think I, I kind of was the obvious choice as, a, as the, uh, you know, as the worship leader for the new campus. Mm-hmm. And um you know, what kind of music uh, were you guys doing? Very, uh, very cool music, man. <laughs> um, so we did like a mixture of, you know, Kayla, super, super contemporary stuff. David Crowder, um, you know, Hillsong. Um, uh, oh, gosh. You know, um, oh my, why am I blanking so bad? Uh, you know, that that kind of stuff. Um city harmonic, a lot of city harmonic. Um, it, but yeah, so, but then what was really cool is that what we would almost always do is we would like right after the message, we would almost always do a secular song that like, if you thought about it through the lens of the message, that suddenly this secular song had like a degree of spirituality to it. I, I, I thought that that was really cool and really special. I really liked that a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, I don't know. I feel like I've been talking a lot. Should you talk more? I don't know. <laughs> no, this is I'm I'm here to listen to you. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah. So, no, I, I actually find spirituality in secular music sometimes more so than I do in like clearly worship yeah. music because I, um, I so because sometimes it, it connects with my soul soul or my life experience and in a deeper way sometimes than just a than just a you know a praise or a worship song yep i've had some i've had some worship songs through my life that have truly you know resonated with my my walk in in that realm but but man i've i listen to more way more secular music always have Mm -hmm. than i than i do just straight christian or worship music because of the spirituality in it to me yeah, I think what's hard with worship music <laughs> is that um so I have this I kind of have this terminology in my head that like uh th- I what I think worship music lacks a little bit is what I call Saturday music and the idea is like if if 
if Christ is crucified and dies on Friday and Saturday, there's this sense that he's gone and he's not going to be back. And there's a real freaking darkness to that. And then Sunday as he's risen and it's great and everything's wonderful. <laughs> I, my life needs some Saturday music, you know, like a lot of my days are full of doubt and being scared and uncertain. And it, I understand why it's hard to write music like that, but I do think that that's like a kind of music that is often lacking in church, in a worship setting. And what's interesting is like, I think the Bible has plenty of stories and verses and things that, that are that. And there are plenty of sermons and messages that are that. But then I think a lot of the time you almost do have to go to secular music to find music that has that level of hurt and that level of doubt and, uh, those lack of answers I, to me, the lack of answers in secular music is, uh, comforting because I don't have answers in my real life. You mm -hmm. know, I, I like mm -hmm. that. I like the uncertainty. Yeah. So I, I did my first public speaking event in, in two and a half years, uh, on good Friday. Okay. Okay. Out yeah. At, out at children's mercy park. And we called it it's Friday. And I, I talked about my journey of darkness the last couple of years that I've gone through and tied it in with what Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Sure. Tied it into that. That's, that's, a, that's a quote from Psalm 22, which is a, a psalm of one of the darkest psalms in the whole 150 psalms. And, uh, and then I just I gave a little little glimmer of hope at the end it's friday but sunday's coming you know yeah but yeah yes. so i i hear you on that that's that's definitely some of the music that i've gone to the last couple of years have have been in those dark places you know yeah matt mason has been my favorite have you heard of him matt mason back to the funeral like, well, uh, his album back to the funeral came out in night 2019 is he uh, local, Matt Mason? No, no, no. Oh, he's there's not. a different Matt Mason. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say I'm really good friends with a Matt Mason. No, I will look. I will look this up. Check so that out. He's from. He's from either Bank on Bank on the Funeral. Bank on the Funeral. That's it. Okay, I yeah. will listen to that after this interview. Yeah, it's sure. a. It's yeah. kind of a bit of a folk alt alt type sure, album, sure. but God, the lyrics are amazing, amazing. Yeah. And then he just I'm dropped a that. new one uh, with a the rap guy. I think he's from. Vir either Virginia, I think he's from the Tidewater area, and I lived out there for about three years. Uh, I think he was a homeschooled Christian kid who has gone through, you can tell, a lot of darkness, addiction, all kinds of stuff yeah. based on his yeah. lyrics. So anyway, well, hey, um, your current projects are pretty amazing. You are a busy guy, man. You you have your hands a lot of everywhere. Yeah, I was, I was late to this, and it's not a surprise. Yeah, I, I, wear, a, I wear a lot of hats right now. And so yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll just get you to comment on on a few of these projects sure. That, sure. because i really um i actually want to get to your your new album i'd uh, love to talk about and that, that whatever that's you want to talk about that's kind of where i want to that's where i want to land yeah. uh but i, I kind of want for people to get a feel for all the stuff that you're involved in right now um one of the, one of the things that a lot of northlanders especially will be aware of is the colony uh you know, coffee house and, uh, the bar that's there. And so I know that you're involved with the rhino. Yeah, um, yeah. and so, so you might uh, give us a little, little sure, background yeah. there. So, um, in the midst of all of, uh, you know, the last year, I don't know if you heard, but there was a global pandemic and it kind of ruined <laughs> live music. Um, so I, I had been the production manager of the Rhino for a really long time. Well, since we opened and, um, basically last summer, 2020, um, late August or so, it was really looking like the entire establishment was probably going to have to close. And, one of the owners left and the remaining owner said, I don't want to, I don't want this to close. I need help. And basically turned to me who I had run the Rhino, the music venue side and my buddy, Ethan Bunce, who had run the bar side and said, I would like to bring you guys on as part owners. And I believe in your guys ability to write the ship. I think you guys can keep us afloat. 
And uh, when that happened, I, um, I, me and my team, I, anytime I say me, I don't mean me. I mean like a royal me. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I would be nothing without the amazing people who helped me there. But we organized a, a 12 hour live telethon to save the rhino. It was one of the most insane things I've ever done in my life because I hosted the entire thing. I was like, uh, I was on hosting. Uh, we did interviews. We did live stand-up comedy, live stream, like truly live. We did, uh, there's this really great band, Listener, who uh, were so kind to donate their time. They they did yeah. a set and we, we pre-taped that one. I just did a live stream of uh, Friends Faint Heart, um, who, oh gosh, actually, if you ever want to have a band on your podcast, I think they would fit your vibe really well. I'm, um, I'm they, interviewing they all, John Terry next week. Oh, uh, John Terry is a listener. listener. John, I love John Terry. So John Terry um, is one of our sound engineers at the okay. Rhino. We're we're good friends. I gotcha. love John Terry. He's and one of my favorite people. I, in the whole I'm going to check yeah. out this Faint Heart band. Yeah, I, I, they're great. Yeah. They're great, and they're they're definitely they grew up pretty fundamental Christian and are in an intro. Their lyrics are very faith about faith, but it's about questioning faith. And yeah, we'll have a whole, you got to check them out. All right. Um, But anyway, so this telethon, it it was crazy and we, we raised enough money, we saved it. And um, so now, now I'm a part owner. Um, I will say that like, so technically we did legally have to rebrand and colony is no more. It's now called cultivar. Uh, I won't get into the the full legality of it, but uh, the Rhino still is the name of the music venue. And then we have um, Cultivar is kind of our catch-all umbrella for Post, who runs our coffee shop, Cheesy Street, who run the restaurant, which is this incredible macaroni and cheese and grilled cheese sandwich place. And then we also have a, rec- a full recording studio in the back, the Triceratops Room, and a photography studio, uh, Ben McBee Photography. So we've got a bunch of things hmm. kind of all happening under one roof, very cool. but very community-centric. What What's going to happen um, are, I'm, I'm sure you guys are thinking about doing some live events now yeah. in the near future. So in, in May, every Friday and every Saturday, we have a concert or comedy show. Now we know we're being very deliberate. We're being very safe. The safety of our patrons and our talent and our, you know, our staff is very important to us. So we are normally a 140 cap space. We are selling 40 tickets to, okay. to our events. So less than a third. And basically what it is, is we, ha- you can either buy a pair of seats or four seats and we have them kind of set up in a checkered board pattern, approximately six feet apart all the way around. And, um, that took some time that took about two or three hours and some measuring tape of me going, okay, wow. how many chairs can we safely fit in here? Interesting. Uh, yeah. So for the next month or so, we're going to be at 40. If we're going to let the science dictate everything, if the numbers get better, then we'll probably, you know, bump that up to 50 or 60 and just slowly over right. the summer, get back towards normal. But it feels very good to be talking to musicians and comedians and, and booking stuff. I can yeah. I feel useful again. I, I feel know. Like, Isn't that yeah. crazy? Man, <laughs> like, what a, a, like a toy coming out of the attic. <laughs> man, events and, <laughs> events and hospitality were the things that just got nailed. I'm telling you, you know? I'll, I will say this just <clears throat> a little behind the curtain is that um, our, you know, landlords, I think sometimes uh, get a bad rap, sometimes reasonably. So uh, our landlord happened to forgive almost all of 2020 sprint wow. for us. And if they hadn't, we wouldn't have made it. Wow. We would not be open. And so oh, cool. I, I will, will always be grateful for that. They basically, they thank said, you who, whoever know, you are. Thank you out there. <laughs> NT Realty for real though. Like okay. they basically, they said, you guys are important to this community. The community would be different if you guys awesome. close. And so, it, yeah, I, we wouldn't be here again. Anytime I ever say me, I don't mean me. I mean, like, like right. I mean, 30 people. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Then tell us about Ope Radio. Oh my God. I've listened. To this is your radio. food, your podcast. And, yes. um, yes, it's a project that you do with pitch magazine. That's correct. Yep. Give us, uh, give us your thoughts behind Ope yeah. and why you so, pick the name Ope. That's the name, interesting. Ope. Yeah. yeah. So if you're from the Midwest, you say Ope like a tick, you can't help it. Ope, I'm going to sneak past you real quick. Ope. Hey, did you know you dropped that? <laughs> uh, you know, it just, it just pops out. My, my 18 month old says it. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, uh, and it's just bred into the Midwest. And uh, I liked the idea of, Oh, I'm just going to steal an hour of your time and, and show you some music. So basically when, uh, when Homegrown Buzz, which was the local music show on 96.5 The Buzz, mm-hmm. closed, like got shut down. Yeah, I used to love that. I 
I, I, I loved it. It changed mm-hmm. my life. I remember being 14 years old and being like, the goal is to get my music played on there. And then I remember getting it played on there when I was like 18 or 19 and being like, my goal is to get played again, you know? And, and <laughs> like, I mean, it, it, that, that show changed my life. And uh, when it went out, I felt like there was just this whole and I felt called to it, you know, maybe, maybe that wasn't my place, but I did. I felt called to it. I said, it, Kansas City needs as many outlets to support local music as possible. And the fact that we just lost this institution is, is not good. And so I, I started doing every Monday. It's an hour long. I play 10 songs by local musicians. I try to sneak some interviews in there too. And the goal for me is I try to apply context. I think that the hardest thing about finding new music is context. I think we're so much more likely to listen to a new album from a band that we've already heard than we are to try a new artist. And we're way more likely to try a totally new artist if one of our friends recommends them. And so my goal is I want to be the guy who says, oh, hey, if you like Death Cab for Cutie and if you like Jimmy Eat World, you're going to love this band Faint Heart. They're so good. They sound like Jimmy Eat World meets Death Cab for Cutie. And then I play you the song it's and a you good hear, combo. oh my gosh, that is what they <laughs> sound like. And then hopefully you go on Bandcamp and you buy the record. And so my, my goal with that is just to shine a light on local music, boost attendance at concerts, you know, help these artists make a little bit of money. Because to be frank, anybody who's at the local level, even if they're really, really hustling, Best case scenario, they're breaking even, but most likely they're sinking thousands of dollars into this hobby that is emotionally rewarding, but but not fiscally. And I, I try to help in any way I can to kind of boost the economics mm. of it. That's great. I I caught a few episodes just in the Thank last week. Thank you. Thank uh, you for listening. And um, yeah, you, I mean, it, it looks to me, or at least the ones I listen to, you, you play, you, you actually play several of their songs right yeah yeah i try really hard to yeah, yeah you know i try to like be about um 15 minutes of, of their music a lot of times yes coupled yes. up with interview of the artists yes. and all of that excellent i, I try like really it. hard to apply context and i think that one of the things that's freeing about a podcast versus the radio is the radio gets a single and they need to play the single because that's the song that boosts sales or whatever i don't have any so if if i have the album and i like three songs off the album i'll just be like yeah i'm gonna play these three songs it doesn't matter if it's a single or not because i'm not the radio you know and that's i think a really freeing thing about the podcasting medium i really like that mm. a lot excellent and then is this disney plus plus ben <laughs> plus friends is that still yeah. happening it still is, that- is it's it's disney plus plus ben plus friends is my uh is my cherry on top it's my podcast that if, if, and when I ever actually have free time, I'm going to do it more regularly. But what it is, is it's just an excuse to make sure that I stay in touch with my pals. And so I started the idea over quarantine. I was like, man, I just miss people. I would like an excuse to hold my friends hostage for an hour or 90 minutes, you know? And so then I suddenly was like, uh, okay, well, I, what's the framing device? And I thought about Disney plus, I thought about the fact Disney has, you know, animated, they've got Pixar, they've got Marvel, they've got Star Wars. It's like anybody can find a movie they like on Disney Plus. And so, um, you know, I I try to do it weekly. Right now, we've gone through a gap where I I haven't done it in a minute. But like, for example, I teamed up with my buddy, Justin Barron, who hosts um, a, a podcast about Marvel Comics. And we broke down every episode of WandaVision as it was coming out and just kind of talked about our fan theories and what we thought about it. But yeah, so Disney plus plus Ben plus friends. Uh, it, it's the thing in my life that I, I wish I could give just a little more attention to because I am proud of it. I did is a lot of fun. And um, I'm hoping that over the summer when my wife is a teacher, uh, when she's home a little bit more and can kind of, uh, you know, help sheepdog the kids a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll find a little bit more time to make sure that yeah. that's a little bit more regular. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, I was looking at. That. Did you ever read the book that Ed Catmull wrote called uh, Creativity Inc.? No, tell me about it. Well, so you know he's he's the guy that that founded Pixar, Ed yeah, Catmull, yeah, yeah. and he ended up buying. <laughs> you know, they got bigger than Disney. And so then they ended up buying out Disney. Right. And, and he, he wrote a book on how he goes about creativity 
Ooh, it's called a Creativity Inc. It came out maybe four years ago, something okay. like that. And it, I love. You got me it. a whole list. I'm so excited. Well, right. no, I, I just loved I'm so, I'm, the. Uh, I, I, yeah, I loved his approach to creativity and how they work with their artists and their writers and all that kind of stuff. And it seems like it'd be right down your your alley. Um, I'm writing all this down. I've got creativity <laughs> Inc. I've got that. I need to listen to Bank on the Funeral. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, like, no, no. I, I'm I'm Good very stuff. excited. So you you've done a little bit of acting is that right and that's right writing yeah, and that's, the that's the, so like screenwriting that's, stuff yeah as so well. my <laughs> my technically my degree is in creative writing I have an emphasis in poetry but i also write plays and and i've written two novels that maybe one day i'll get around to getting them published and um I, I like to write screenplays and, and short, short films and i've, I've worked with uh, our mutual buddy matt cox uh, and, uh, and, and my partner, um, I, I kind of call my creative writing partner, Jacob Roberts, who's usually he directs and then I act. And then we kind of co-write together our short films a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it's, that's uh, file that under just the same file as Disney plus plus Ben plus friends, which is a, a creative endeavor. I wish I had a little bit more time for, but I, I did acting all through high school and college and, uh, I love acting. I love, I love writing. I especially like to create characters. It's, it's especially fun to write something and then act in it. I, I find that to be very fun because you get to conceptualize kind of what it should look like. And then there's a, a whole different challenge of actually embodying the thing that you wrote. Excellent. I like that a lot. Yeah. We're real quickly. Give us your favorite, uh, uh, series to binge on right now, either on Netflix or Amazon Plus oh, or Hulu wow. or whatever. Yeah. So what I just binged that I think is one of the most charming little shows ever is Gavin and Stacy. It's on HBO Max. It was uh, co-created by James Corden. And that's actually like where he got discovered. Hmm. And it is this BBC show. There are, I think, three seasons and a Christmas special. Very short, very British. And the premise is... This guy from this like really posh part of London and this girl from this kind of kind of, uh, you know, kind of trashy part of Wales. Uh, they fall in love over the phone. They meet and then they end up falling in love. And, and uh, it's sort of about them. But then it's also sort of about their best friends. And uh, it's, it's about culture and it's about, you know, love. And, 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 and it's just very funny and sweet and short. And I think it's a real gem. And I think probably everybody who's British has already been aware of it, but I don't think us Yanks are uh, as aware of it. And I, I, my wife and I could not stop watching it. It's just charming hmm. and funny and sweet. It's got a huge heart. Uh, any, anything that's got a big heart always hmm. gets points for me. Nice. Nice. My favorite uh, through the Corona virus year, 2020 yeah. was Queens Gambit. Uh, I loved it. God, Absolutely was... loved it amazing so well shot so well done yeah i heard that they actually got world chess pros on set to make sure that the chess was realistic and that like hmm. the pieces were where they should be and interesting yeah that main main acting performance was so great yeah i'm with you really it was great really amazing. really well done really connected with me because of my uh my journey through uh rehab and recovering different things like that the last couple of years because it had the just powerful yeah it had the uh, the addiction recovery element running through it underlying well and i think a thing that some of her that, that it touched on that i always am drawn towards is that um you know she started to feel like spoilers i guess for queen's gambit a little bit but like she started to feel like she was gonna that she was better at chess when she was abusing substances you know mm -hmm. and i think that like one of the traps that we can really fall into uh whether it be like uh you know a, you know an actual drug or or you know something else we can convince ourselves we need things to, to function in certain ways that we that we don't actually need that right. you know and then we become dependent on them um i thought that was one of the really powerful themes of the I show thought really, so. i'm with you i like yeah. it big time yeah i also loved the you know the guy the janitor guy in the basement oh, that affirmed what her. a performance what a performance like when he when he spoke to her heart about how special she really was Yep. That moment, like I was in from that point. Oh my on. gosh. Like, yeah, that. I've hardly ever seen an actor do more with fewer lines. Like, yeah. what did he have? 10 lines, the whole thing? Maybe. I don't know, but. Because he hardly talked at all. But, you know, it was almost all nonverbal and like yeah. scoffs and, yeah, yeah incredible that was amazing. performance. 
Well, let's talk about your album. So I, when I, let's. when I wanted to interview you, I wasn't sure where I'd want to like kind of focus our, our time, but I sure. really loved your album. Thank you. And, and so I don't, I would, I don't know that I would say this, but like, if, if anybody out there likes the punk genre or the pop punk genre, this album is well worth your time. Every Thank song you. is, Thank you. is well crafted, well written. Um, no, I've, I've listened to it multiple times and I love lyrics. So I want to, I want to dive into some of the lyrics, lyrics with you yeah. <laughs> because uh, I'm always, uh, I always have to love the music, but once I love the music, I'm really diving into the lyrics and then the lyrics are what really capture me long-term. I'm almost always the exact same way. Yeah. I'm almost always the same way. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, and when I started listening to it, I felt like it was a concept album to some degree. Yay. Cause it is. That's great. All I'm right. so glad that. I'm so glad that's that why I want to kind of spend some time I'm with you walking through. through. So there's, there's seven song. Actually the first song on the album is called, ba Oh, by the way, it's called the band is called the way, way back. Yep. And you are the singer songwriter for this I, band. I sing. Yep. And then on the, the acoustic song, I play the guitar. I don't, otherwise I don't play any guitar. And why don't we give a little, Quick plug. How can people find your, your stuff? Your podcast oh, pretty much, is easy. Yeah. It's o O P E radio. Exclamation point. Yeah, yeah. I added the exclamation point to make it more Googleable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, but, yeah, I mean, it's all on Spotify. Um, I mean, if you, you know, Bandcamp and iTunes are, are, are great too. We're going to actually, if you go to Bandcamp, we're on a, we're on a small local label called really awesome records. And we are actually about to do a vinyl pressing of the record uh, that'll probably be available in late June or early July. And I'm really okay. excited about that. All right. And the title of this album <laughs> is a mouthful <laughs> is baggage or you're never going to leave it all behind. Yep. Which is, uh, which for me right now is kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, crud, but it's true. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. some things I'd like to leave behind, but I'm I'm kind of realizing, yeah, they're probably going to be with me for a while, you know. Yes, um, I because of where I am in my life and um, things I've been through, we can talk about if we want or or not, whatever. Uh, I gravitate really towards writing songs that are hopeful songs about hopelessness, if that makes sense. So I kind of think that if you had to summarize the lyrics in one little box, they're, they're hopeful songs about hopelessness. It's mm -hmm. about trying to find the silver lining. Um, and the record specifically, I think is about trying to figure out the things in your life that have happened to you and uh, asking yourself, uh, what do I need to cut out? Like, what do I need to just fully move on from and what parts have shaped me and changed me. And I need to accept that and make peace with it and, and find something to do with that. And it's about processing grief and negative energy and, and, and finding places to put it. Yes. Excellent. So the first uh, song is really just kind of like a musical interlude yeah. Um, yeah. called baggage baggage. And it yep. sound, it sounds like you probably went out and captured some sound in a airport or a train station we, or we something found, like that. Yeah. I dug around on the internet and found some, uh, some air audio that I really liked. And then I got my daughter Iris to come up and she's the one who actually delivers the line. Uh, You're never going to leave it all behind. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, yeah, the rest is just kind of punk rock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you, you jump the first song. I'm not afraid to walk this world alone. Yeah, we like long, pretentious titles. Definitely a, <laughs> you know, a breakup song. Yeah. So the first half of the record is mostly kind of breakup songs to some degree, I think. Um, so this song in particular and uh, the song Two Songs Later Pages are both about the same subject. Um, they're actually about um, my my dog who um, really horrible um so i i had a, a sheltie and uh, his name's edgar Allan paw um he's and um basically when my daughter 
Iris was about two or three years old and started being able to walk around and, and things. Uh, he kept biting her and he, 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 we actually, he hospitalized her twice cause he, he bit her so hard. And so we had to get rid of him. Um, we were able to find some family friends who didn't have kids and um, you know, I still get to see him every now and then it, it's a very, very complicated relationship because uh, I love dogs. He had been my dog for three years. You know, he, he was man's best friend, but um in the the song um uh um pages is the, there's a lyric where i say why'd you make me choose when you knew i was never going to pick you and um that very much is about him and and um saying like you're you're a dog why would i ever pick my human daughter over you you know but so both of those songs are very much breakup songs about um I tried to channel that into a, a more um, a broad. I try to make my lyrics so that they're true to me and true to my experience, but also I will change the story a little bit to make it more relatable. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted it to feel a little bit more like somebody that you thought you were going to marry or, or maybe a best friend. And the idea is regardless, you know, that that one, uh, the chorus is, you know, we could have built something real, but you knocked it down. And this idea that like, I thought you were going to be here forever and you chose to leave and you chose to knock this down and break this beautiful thing. And now I am the one who has to clean up the mess. You, you came in here and wrecked it and now I have to clean it up. And I, I think um, I, I, I tried really hard to make that, that nugget of it, the, what the song's about Mm -hmm. so that, you know, not Mm -hmm. everybody can relate to a song that's about their dog biting their daughter, but I think everybody can relate to the idea of, there's somebody in your life that you thought was going to be there forever. And, and now they're not. And now you have to deal with it. Right. Pages left unfolded. Is that, did I catch those? Yeah. Words, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's like uh, truly so, in my head, those songs are kind of P- pages is almost a sequel because I think the first song is you're dealing with the anger. Like uh, the, I'm not afraid to walk this world alone is this kind of statement of like, you broke everything, but I'm not afraid to keep living without you. Mm-hmm. And then pages is actually when you're having to live without the, um, you know, um, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. The, yeah. Uh, I suppose what hurts me most are these moments left unfolded. Do me a favor. When I cross your mind, dog, you those pages and highlight all, all of my best lines. And this thought of kind of like, um, you're not in my life anymore and I'm probably not ever going to see you again, or maybe I'll see you sometimes, but I hope you think of me. And I hope when you do, I hope you think of me fondly and how complicated that is mm-hmm. and and uh, you know i i threw a little yeah. bit of it's good former romantic relationships in there too I'm, I'm happily married and have been for long enough that i have to really fictionalize that part of it but um yeah pages has the lyric mm-hmm. uh, i hope our paths don't cross i hope we're polarized to keep pushing apart but if you come this way i can't say with any confidence that i won't ask you to stay and um i mm. i thought that that was a feeling that a lot of people yeah, would be able definitely. to definitely i could relate to it um your your song lacuna inc yes uh that was um one that i thought was like uh, again that relational like a new relationship but you've got doubts because of yeah stuff so that's lacuna incorporated on. that one is about the movie eternal sunshine of the spotless mind which is one of my favorite movies of all time mm. and what i wanted to do is since the first half of the record is kind of break up songs i wanted to try to write um like a non sequential breakup song. And I started thinking about like, how do you write a song like that? And then I kept thinking about that movie, which I don't know if you've ever seen it before, I but have. Uh, it's what I just think it's an absolute masterpiece. And I think what's so beautiful about that movie is it shows them falling in love and falling out of love and breaking up and, and it shows all of it. And so on that song, uh, there's actually several lyrics that are literally quotes from the movie lifted and I felt the need to bring in my friend Courtney. And basically the idea is that I'm kind of, I'm the Jim Carrey character and she is the Kate Winslet character. Mm. And if you, if you follow it under that lens um, we tried to kind of tell the story of it, but yeah, absolutely. It's about trying to juggle um, something that's probably going to fall apart. It's probably too late to fix it, but on the off chance that it isn't, you know, trying to cling to it and, and keep it together. Meet me back at the start. Exactly. Uh-huh. Exactly. I like that. Like we fell in love. Yeah. Somehow. Can we, can we find that feeling yeah, again? Find it again. Right. All right. I'm going to have you, well, let's 
at the end, I'm going to have you do one of your songs uh, from the album called uh, sure. uh, Kintsugi. Kintsugi. Yeah. yeah. But let's talk about that here in a minute. Um, sure. Before we get to Kintsugi, which is the fifth song on it, then you have Bad Star and Waste Away. Yeah. And Bad Star, I understand, was uh, what won a uh, nomination or actually won the best yeah. local song of what, 2020? Yeah, it's that the, was really the pitch, um, the pitch an unbelievable voted on. honor. Yeah. It really was. Um, I mean, I'll be very frank. Um, I've had a lot of creative endeavors and projects in my life, but I've I've never been more proud of anything I've done than I am of this record. This record, to me, feels like the culmination of a lot of heartache and a lot of tough years and grief. And um, Bad Star in particular um, is a song that... Um, for it to win best song in the pitch and be even thought of by anybody as the best song by a local band in 2020 um, floored me. I mean, I cried when, when I got the phone call, I was like, Are you, that's impossible. <laughs> that can't be true. Um, it's a song that I wrote for me that actually the premise of the song is that future me is speaking to past me. And um, basically, I guess this is the part of the podcast where I, I let the air out of the room and depress everybody. But um um, a few years back, my, uh, my son, when he was three days old died and it, um, you know, was devastating as, as you would expect. And, um, very shortly after that, my wife had an emergency appendectomy and it was pretty scary. And somewhere between those two things occurring, I developed PTSD. I, I had already battled generalized anxiety disorder and just kind of chronic depression throughout my life. But, then I was suddenly dealing with, um, with post-traumatic stress disorder. And it was really, um, it was really wild and unexpected. And I think and for a very long time, I was really in denial about it. I kind of had this attitude of like, well, I, I'm not a soldier. I, I like, I wasn't in war. Like how, why would I have PTSD, yeah. you know? And I really denied it. And I really, um, I finally kind of, after, go, you know, going to therapy and, and a psychiatrist, I kind of came to terms with it and accepted that that's what was happening. And um, yeah, it was uh, life changing to say the least. I was kind of gone there for a, a couple of years. I I'm really thankful for my family and friends that stuck around by me and helped me get through. Um, but so the song bad star is really me from a place of a little bit of clarity and a little bit of perspective and having, you, you know, met my daughters saying to myself, um, uh, Hey, you're actually at rock bottom. This actually is as bad as it can get. Cause I think a lot of songs that are trying to be hopeful, kind of going back to what we we're saying earlier about, you know, hymns and stuff. Um, there's a little bit of a disingenuous nature of a song. That's like, hang in there, bud. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, well, if you're that positive, then how do you know how I feel? Mm -hmm. And so this song comes out and literally says, you are not wrong things could not get any worse. You're not wrong. This is not what you deserve. Mm -hmm. And then the lyric that I'm particularly proud of is I don't know if everything ever gets better. I just know it gets less bad, less bad. And yeah, I picked up um, that lyric stings because it's true. Yeah. And I still kind of hate that it's true. I keep wanting to, I keep wanting there to be a day where I go like, Oh, I was wrong. I wasn't, I wasn't optimistic enough, but no, it's always bad. It always will mm. suck that my son died. Mm. It will always suck that I have to battle PTSD now. Mm. Um, but multi, you know, like life, life contains multitudes. It's also phenomenal and wonderful that I have these beautiful, amazing daughters who are the lights of my life. And I am a, I am the owner of a music venue, which is literally my dream job. And I'm married to my best friend. You know I mean? Like, like mm. it, it can all be true. And so yeah. I tried really hard in that song to capture the truth of the fact that, a moment of your life will be rock bottom. A moment will be as bad as it physically, emotionally, spiritually can get. Yes. And that there's power in admitting that and there's power in accepting that. And, um, you know, I, if anybody hears that song and gets any kind of hope or whatever, great. Whatever we would play it live, this is a thing I definitely will miss. You know, I hopefully someday soon we'll get to do this again. But before the pandemic, when we would play that song live on the bridge, I would always go around to the audience and uh, just hug people and say, I'm glad you're here. 
And, and, and I encouraged everybody to turn to somebody near them and give them a hug and say, I'm glad you're here. And, um, you know, just try to try to really mm. create a moment where everybody's present and thankful for the fact that they're all there just because you just never know what somebody's battling with. You just yeah, never know definitely. what kind of day somebody's having. And it's important to just tell the people that you love that you love them. Mm. Good stuff. Sorry, I went on a tangent Good there. Stuff. It's an emotional no, it's song great. for me. It's great. <laughs> Uh, and I love that song. Love the lyrics. So, well, let's talk about Kintsugi. Sure. Uh, tell us about the meaning of that word. And yeah, so Kintsugi for me, this one, um, I, I, you know, I've actually probably would say this is the proudest I've ever been of any song I've ever written. Um, this is another one that I wrote kind of for myself, but I actually think maybe this is a, um, this one, Kate, I wrote it after bad star and, and, and I think it kind of feels like after bad star in a way it, it does. Feel, so like the premise of Kintsugi, uh, it's a Japanese art form that, um, basically suggests that there's beauty and brokenness. And what basically what you do is you take a broken vase or, or dish or something, um, usually ceramic or, 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 um, glass and, uh, repair it. And then what you do is you use gold paint to call attention to the cracks. You actually go out of your way to overly embellish the cracks and the damage. And the idea is that that is the art form, that there is the art form itself is the repair and the brokenness and that there's beauty in the fact that this thing was broken, but somehow put back together and that it'll never be the same, Mm. but it's a new thing and it's a beautiful thing. Yes. Regardless. And so um, I came into I, I came into contact with the term um, just because I'm an insomniac and I'm on Wikipedia all the time. Hey, uh, and that's what and, got uh, me into trouble. It's 25 yeah, years yeah. of insomnia. Ugh. And I I just um, I found it kind of in the midst of my journey of healing and was like, that's me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, it just spoke to me. Like, it was like, I am Kintsugi. Like right. I, I am like this yeah. project of me trying to rebuild myself as Kintsugi. And um, so <laughs> then I started really trying to figure out, I tried to crack like a riddle kind of, how do I write a song that explains that? How do I explain? Mm-hmm. And I, I realized that I kind of needed to create a character who was broken and explain it kind of third person, I used Paul Simon and Bruce Springsteen as a big influence there and try to create a, a character, this person um, who is broken and, and she is uh, she's trying to heal. She's tr- like, it's like the, the lyrics on the chorus, you know, it basically is like you you've tried medication, you've tried meditation, you've prayed, you've, you've, you've changed jobs. You've, rem- you've done everything you can, but there's a part of your hurt. There's a part of your trauma that will never go away. And then on the bridge, I changed the the narrative from being about this third party to being a, about me specifically. And I try to mm-hmm. put skin in the game. And then um, that's when I have the lyrics. Um, I used to be a lighthouse in the middle of the night, guiding my friends and family safely to the shore as they fought their fight. Mm-hmm. But I lost someone I needed, my, my son, and I went black inside and I'm never going to leave that all behind but I'm going to fight. I'm going to call attention to my repair using gold to fill the cracks. And I was gone there for a minute, but I swear I'm finally back and I might never be the same and I might never glow as bright, but I'm still here. So I'm going to make some light. And then I kind of ended on a a double chorus of that and I switched the the pronouns to, we are never going to be the same and we'll never, but, but we can still make some light and uh, just trying to, you know, suggest, um, yeah. I like it, it's, it's about acceptance. Like it, it, it's, I think part of why the record kind of hurts a little bit is, is again, it's admitting it sucks to admit like, yeah, no, it'll, it'll never be the same. Like it will always every day. That's why it hurts so bad when it happens. Like, you know, okay, no matter what, I'm going to be the guy whose son died, but I, I don't want to just be the guy whose son died. I want to be, I still want to be who I was. I was a lighthouse. I was this optimistic, bubbly, you know, like a Hufflepuff Muppet man. And I can't just let that die with my son, you know, and, and maybe 
Yeah, I cry more at movies than I used to. And I have PTSD now and I have flashbacks. But that doesn't mean that I can't also still, you know, tell jokes and laugh really loud and, and be a goofball. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. Yeah, so good. I love this uh, as a metaphor. I think, you know, the Japanese have a few words that capture that kind of beautiful imperfection or this idea of, uh, you know, there's beauty in the repair, which is yeah. just awesome. It super resonated with me and where I've been the last couple of years. And I, I'm actually uh, a work in progress. So I'm still hoping for some of that. I mean, I am too. That's what I always try to stress to people is like, I I speak from like a perspective of like, I accomplished it, but I'm, I mean, I'm still in therapy. I'm still, you know, on my psychiatric medication, you know, like it's, it's more just that I know I made it through the worst of it, Mm -hmm. you know? And, Mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that people know, Yes. That. I want to normalize that. Yeah. So anytime I speak, I want to be very clear. It's <laughs> very, anytime I speak like that, I'm, it, it's a very, I hope, it's a very hopeful song for me. Uh, Cause when I heard it, I immediately was like, man, yeah, that's what I pray they'll happen through all that I've been going through. So yeah. let's, uh, let's have you uh, um, kind of close us out with uh, you're doing this song. Play it. Yeah. yeah. I'll do that. And for sure, uh, for sure. love the audience to hear this. Kent Sugi from the album uh, Baggage, or you're not get you're you're not going to leave it all behind, yeah, and it's, it's from the it's band The Way Way Back. <laughs> I've never thought it was okay. With, the Way Way Back Baggage, or you're never going to leave it all behind. It's it's 19 words. It's unacceptable. And it's, this is this is Ben Went doing Kent Sugi. On some tune, right? Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. All right. You circled the date and told yourself it'd be the day you run away. You got prepared. You told your brother and two friends from work Left the whole rest unaware Brother looked you in the eyes Asked you if you were scared You just smiled and said I'll tell you when I get there So you packed up all your bad dreams And the ghosts that haunt you most Left them stranded at the station As you fled for the west coast But no matter where you run to No matter where you hide You're never gonna leave it all behind You planted roots You told yourself that by the fall you'd bear some fruit Stretched your branches out You made some new friends in that shade You never really shook the doubt Your brother called you up concerned In the middle of the night He said, I'm not scared, I just can't see the light. But you took all the medication, meditated, exercised. The demon still snuck up on you in the middle of the night. Cause no matter who you pray to, no matter how hard you try, you're never gonna leave it all behind. When you woke up in the morning, it was just another day But the sunset left its tattoo on your brain People talk about being broken like there's some way to get fixed They don't tell you what to do when the pieces left don't fit Oh, I used to be a lighthouse in the middle of the night Guiding my friends and family safely To the shores they fought their fights But I lost someone I needed And I went black inside And I'm never gonna leave it all behind But I'm gonna fight Yeah, yeah, I'll call Attention to my repair Using gold to fill the cracks And I was gone there for a minute But I swear, finally back And I might never be the same And I might never glow as bright But I'm still here, so I'm gonna make some light Okay, yeah, I might never be the same 
And I'm on never glow is bright But I'm still here so I'm gonna make some light Okay, yo, we might never be the same And we might never glow is bright But we are still here so let's try to make some light Yay, awesome Thank you Thank you. I love that. Enjoy it. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining in to Spirituality Adventures. We appreciate it. And check out Ben Wentz's album. Very good. Love it. You'll get a lot out of it. And thanks for joining us, Ben. Thank you so much for having me. This is really enjoyable. All Thank right. You. We'll see you next time. Thanks again for tuning in. Remember to visit our support page at www.spiritualityadventures.com. If you like what you heard, be sure to share it and leave a comment. Thanks again. Have a great day. Hi, Media Production.